you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Brown Sugar by the Rolling Stones. Surely one of the greatest Telecaster guitar riffs of all time. Great guitar playing there with Keith Richards. So the first really important thing to note for this tune before you get started is that we are in open G tuning. Now if you're not sure how to get yourself to open G tuning, you want to go and check out the lesson on the website. I'll leave a link in the description there for you as well. But it's really important that you get yourself in open G tuning before you start the lesson. All, all of the chords and stuff are going to sound a little bit weird. Uh, now this particular song also never uses the thickest string. So all of those stories that you heard about uh, Keith Richards playing a five string Telecaster uh, in open G tuning you don't tend to use the thickest string as much when you're doing this kind of riff anyway for more complicated tunes you definitely do but uh, for these kind of tunes Rolling Stones tunes uh, you don't use the thickest string so what you want to be doing every time you're playing a bar is poking that first finger up to make sure that the thickest string is muted or if you're a massive Stones fan get yourself a Telecaster tune it to open G and take off the sixth string for you're probably never going to play it so uh, let's get to a close-up and check out how to play this all-time classic that is what I'm going to call riff A. There are four sections to this song and this is the first one we want to check out. Okay so the first chord we're going for here we want to be doing a bar with the first finger covering strings one to five. Okay we don't want to be playing the thicker string so use the tip of your finger to mute that string. Be careful where it sits because if in the wrong spot you might end up getting yourself a harmonic. So a good idea is to try and play this whole song really without touching the thicker string with your picking hand, not to pick that string, because there are times when you can't mute it and uh, you know it's good for your accuracy as well. Or just take the string off and do it, pull a Keith and just not have that string on there at all. Anyway, so this is a really common chord in an open tuning because it is in fact, this is a G chord like that with no fingers down except the bar, okay, the 12th fret. Now the, the first chord that we need actually, we're going to put the second finger down in the 13th fret of the second string, that's one fret above the bar, and uh, next the third finger is going to go down the 14th fret of string four. Um, this gives, is a real classic Stones chord, especially when it's lifted off this, this, this movement. There's loads and loads of songs that use this. You know, Start Me Up, Brown Sugar, uh, Hoggy Top Woman, there's loads of them that have got this ex exact uh, movement happening quite often. So uh, the first chord is with those two fingers down and then we lift those two fingers off and play just the straight bar. Okay, but what you really want to notice here is that the chords are nice and tight. It's not... It's this. And we're doing that by muting with the picking hand after we've hit the chord, it's going to come down and the side of the hand is going to rest on, right on the strings, about you know a couple of inches away from the bridge. If it's too far back, it won't give a proper mute. So it wants to be quite far forward. Okay, you can also do it a little bit by lifting those fingers off, but you don't get as good a mute as you do when you're using the outside part of your hand there. So then we're moving the shape down to the fifth fret. We're going to play that twice with just the bar at the fifth fret. Then we're going to put fingers two and three down in their usual spots. We're going to strum twice and then lift it off. So the first two bars is this one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. So you can hear there are times when we're letting the chord ring out as well. Now I'll tell the truth here, I've always played that riff exactly the same as that just four times at the intro, but uh, while giving this song a bit of a listen before doing this lesson, I discovered that the, the way the second and third fingers go down is slightly different each time, which is a little bit annoying for me doing the lesson. I was just hoping to go, well, that's it, do it four times. But, uh, and if you want to do that, four times through, probably no one will ever notice, but because I'm a guitar nerd, I have to tell you these other things. So actually the second time it does this, okay, it's just got an extra strum with these fingers down, okay, uh, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, 
da, 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 da. just at the end. So the first one. Second one. Now the third one's different again. It's the same rhythm as the second one, but this time we're going... So it's just one chord at the end there with the bar. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So just the bar down on beat four. And thankfully for us, number four is the same as number three. So let me play that whole intro again for you one more time so you can see all of those things I've just been talking about. Here we go. Three, four, one. And I should point out as well that all of this is down strums in case you didn't notice. So all of the... Every chord that I'm playing there is played with a down strum. And the reason that's important is because that's going to change when we move to riff B. Okay, so uh, let me play you uh, riff B, the second riff that you need. So that's riff B. So we're starting at the, with a the little bar at the 8th fret. And we do a quick down, up, down. It's actually starting on the and after 4. So 2, 3, 4, and a 1. That's the rhythm. 1, 2, 3, 4, and a 1. 2, 3, 4, and a 1. Worth practicing getting that down, up, down. So the downbeat's happening on the beat. Again, 2, 3, 4, and a 1. 2, 3, 4, and a 1. It's often people struggle getting a little onto the beat there. So that's how it's starting off. And now we're using, I use my little finger. Some people tend to use their third finger. I prefer using my little finger, uh, which is going down two frets higher than the bar. That'll be the 10th fret in the third string. Again, a really, really common little movement for the stones there to have the bar and then put the, the this extra note. It's actually the ninth. Let's make it a ninth chord, okay? That's uh, what's happening. Um, so what we're going to be doing is... And a one, two, three, and four, and... Okay? Now what's different here as well, with the exception of the the down up down thing, we're always going to be strumming down on the beat and up on the off beats now, okay? So just be aware of that as I go through and play you the different uh, rhythm figures as to whether we're doing a down stroke or an up stroke. Okay, so let's go through it now one bar at a time. I'm going to leave off the little just to explain this stuff, just keep kind of keeping it simple, but know that when you're going into this B section, you're going to go a little quick down up down going into it. So the very first bar So it's the 8th fret. Then you're going to put the little finger down there for the ninth chord. Down, down, up. And with that up stroke, you're lifting off the little finger. And then you're going to move it down to the 5th fret for an up strum. So 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, and again. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, 2, Three. Now the next bar as well. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and Okay, so what's going on there? Once we've moved down to the fifth fret, which is happening the and after four, we're putting our second and third fingers down in this, uh, it's called a six sus four shape, is the kind of the proper technical name for it, um, I guess. I mean, it can have a few different names as well. It's kind of like an F chord. Um, with a C bass as well, but 6 sus 4 is the commonly used uh, term for this particular grip. And we're putting that down for three strums, so... So we've gone from the up on the and after four, and then we've got the fingers down, up, down, down, up, and with that up stroke we're lifting them off. 
Okay, so let me run you through those first two bars again. Two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, two, and again, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one. Now I'm just going to mention the strumming here. Down, 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 up, 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 down, down, up, up. Okay, now once we're down at this first fret, we've got this really interesting pattern. So we've gone the upstroke there at the first fret, that holds over the bar. Then we're going to be doing, adding the ninth, lifting it off, moving up to the third fret, then adding the ninth, lifting it off again. Three, four, and one, and two, and three, and. Okay, it's a little bit awkward that. Three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. Okay, and now we've actually jumped straight back to the uh, fifth fret with the uh, six sus four down already. Uh, it lands on beat uh, three is when you're going to take that off. So, uh, and then we're repeating that same thing again. So, let me take you through that whole four bar sequence now, nice and slow. Two, three, four, and a one, two. To the verse. Now, the verse is a little bit weird because there's lots of different parts going on. So, uh, what I tend to prefer is. Okay, but there's lots of different options here. You can do it just a little bit. I quite like doing that. I quite like playing the uh, little horn line. Okay, I've given you a little bit of a look at that stuff, so uh, see how you get along with it. I'm just going to take you through the basic one again now. So we're starting off here at the fifth fret, which is a C chord. Uh, and I'm using this little, um, the second and third finger, the six sus four pattern. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, up, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, off, off, on, off, on, off, off, on. Really worth getting into that pattern, man. It's a really, really nice one. Three, four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and. Remember that the hand's going to keep moving all the time. So if it's on the beat, if it's a one, two, three, or a four, it's going to be a down strum. The rest are going to be up strums. Three, four, and one, and two, three, and. So this is really going down on beat two, and then three, and one. Two, three, four, and one. Two, three, and four. Uh, two. Let's 
same thing up on the 10th fret. Back to the 5th fret. Down to the 3rd fret but without it. Back to the 5th fret. Okay? And there's lots of little variations that you can get into going into the chorus and stuff, but it's, there's lots of different guitar parts going on in there, so you want to have a listen and just pick one that you, uh, that you particularly like, because if you, you know, unless you're doing a two guitar or three guitar band, you're not going to be able to play all of the bits. So uh, let's take you through the chorus now. So again, this is kind of a mixture of the different parts here. It's not just really exactly what one of the guitar parts is playing uh, on the original record. Um, but we're playing the open G, which is the open fifth string, and then the rest of the chord. Then we're sliding with the third finger up to the fourth fret of the fifth string. Open D string, second fret on the D string, that's the fourth string, with the first finger, and then the open G string, the third string. Bass, chord, fourth fret open, second fret open. One, two, three, and four, and two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and two, three, four. Now, the little lick that I'm going to show you now. Okay, so barring the third fret strings two and three, hammering the second finger down in the fourth fret. Put in the third finger down the fifth fret of the fourth string, laying it down so it's covering the fifth fret of the second and third strings, and then back to the way we started. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Again, rhythm really important. One, two, and three, and four. And the little hammer-on's not really got a time, it's just as fast as you can, got it. Okay, put that with the riff. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four. Now at that point, you're jumping up to the fifth fret after that riff. It's a little bit of a jump there. I think I'll put an extra note just in it. Yeah, sometimes I'm putting that. Uh, but you, I don't think it's on the record. I didn't write it there in my transcription. Could be though. It's the kind of thing that would be uh, fitting in their style. Anyway, let's jump into that. You're adding the six, uh, the six sus four on beat two and the three and thing, three and thing that we were doing in the verses. God, tongue's getting tight. At the end. Okay, we're going from the bar, the six sus four, back off to the open strings. One. Two, three, and four, and one. Two, and three, and four, and one. Two, three, and four, and one. Two, three, and four, and one. Two, three, and four, and two, three, and four, and one. Two, three, and four, and one. Two, three, and four. hope you enjoy playing this tune. It's one of my favourite Stone songs. Uh, some of you may know that I was actually in a Rolling Stones tribute band for about six or seven years when I first moved to England. Uh, so I'm pretty familiar with a lot of Rolling Stone songs. We played a couple of hundred gigs a year uh, for, yeah, six years or seven years or something I was in the band. So uh, 
hopefully there'll be some more stone stuff uh, coming very soon um, actually one thing I was going to mention as well is the sound so um, I'm using this uh, Princeton, uh, I can never remember the name, the Princeton Reverb 2 uh, Fender amplifier, uh, like an 80s Paul Revere um, one. And uh, I've, I've used a little bit of distortion in that, so um, the, the whole sound really is just the guitar and the amp. However, I've got a bit of what's called a slapback delay on. So if I just turn that off for a second so you can hear what it sounds like without it. And now I turn it on. If you can hear it, it goes da da. There's a little, after I've played the note, you can hear this very short little, it's called a slapback. Very common in the blues uh, kind of genre. But you can hear, if you listen to the original recording, you'll hear da 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 da. It's actually, two, it sounds almost like two notes. But it's very shortly afterwards. So uh, that's the only effect I've got on. I'm using my uh, Strymon L Capistan um, pedal. I've got the time at about nine o'clock. Uh, the mix at about nine o'clock, tape age off, wow and flutter off, repeats just so it does one repeat only uh, and I've got it to a single tape head uh, and in mode B. I know that uh, all sounds a little bit complicated but uh, just in case you happen to have one of those pedals otherwise you find a, a delay pedal and find a slap back setting or, or get it so it's just doing one repeat one delay and a very very small amount of time I'm not sure how many milliseconds this is I've never been very good at counting uh, milliseconds I just listen but data data that kind of effect and that's that's the only effect that I've got I think there might be a little bit of reverb on the app tiny bit of reverb on the app and that's it so uh have a little bit of fun with this, have a little bit, have a load of fun with this song because this is a cracker, it's great fun to play along with the record and uh, if you get really into it actually something that you might want to uh, explore a little bit is trying to listen to the different layers because there's a lot of guitars going on in this song so it can be a really interesting thing to listen to one headphone only and then the other headphone and if you've got fancy stuff like Transcribe trying to cut out different frequency bands and listen to what the acoustic guitar is playing and then see if you can separate in your ears the different guitar parts so you can really hear what What's going on. It's a fascinating uh, journey with the Stones because they, they're brilliant at doing this guitar weaving is what Keith used to call it. You know the way that one guitar and another guitar kind of play together and, and it's not really rhythm or lead. They're both doing bits of rhythm and bits of lead and it, and it weaves together to create these uh, amazing pieces of music. Anyway, well that's it for today. I really hope you enjoy playing this song and I'll see you all very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye bye. <laughs>